Welcome everyone. This is lecture six. Today, we are going to be talking about a hotel elite status. Well, part one of that at least. So we're going to talk about how to get free breakfast, how to get sweet upgrades, how to reduce your fees. Uh, and then also we're going to look at a little bit of some point sweet spots. So sweet spots are just optimal redemptions for points. So hotels that are either underpriced in points relative to their cash rate or are just even if they're really expensive on their points rate, their cash rates are so exorbitantly high that pretty much they're going to have to have a good points rate just because the categories top out. Any questions before we get started? Cool. So first, I'm actually going to turn off one of the lights. Cool. So what are the benefits of hotel elite status? Well, they vary greatly depending on the program. But sometimes they can include free breakfast, room upgrades, sometimes up to suites, which can be very, very nice, reduced fees, uh, increased point earning on your paid stays, late checkout, early check-in, and just better overall treatment. And especially in this last point here, we're gonna call this a soft benefit. Now, some of these other ones are also soft benefits here. Let's look at what a soft benefit versus what a hard benefit is. So, hard benefits. These are benefits or rules that the program must follow according to their terms. So, if a hotel loyalty program says this benefit must be provided to you, then it must be provided to you. There's no room for interpretation. As an example of this, free breakfast. If the program says you are entitled to free breakfast, then you are entitled to free breakfast how it defines. There's no gray area there. It's breakfast, it's free, you get it. Uh, an additional one is waived fees. If a program says you are supposed to get waived resort fees on your stays, there's not really a way for a hotel to screw that up. It's a waived resort fee. Uh, and additionally, uh, increased point earning, right? It's just something on the back end of their computer that they can hard code in. It's not up to the individual hotel to implement. A soft benefit, on the other hand, are up to each hotel and they may or may not always follow them. So examples of these. This. So room or suite upgrades. Even though a program may say you are entitled to a room upgrade or a suite upgrade upon check-in, if it is available, the hotel doesn't always have to give it to you. So different hotel programs follow this better than others. And they may choose to give it to you. They may choose not to give it to you. Even if a suite is available and that you're supposed to be eligible for it, they might say, oh, sorry, this suite is not eligible for elite member upgrades. So even though this should be more of a hard benefit, I'm actually going to classify it as a soft benefit, meaning that it's up to the hotel to actually implement. Additionally, late checkout. Unless the checkout uh, pro term is guaranteed, so if you remember from last week when we talked about Amex FHR, you had a guaranteed 4 p.m. late checkout, that would be considered a hard benefit because they can't screw that up. They have to give you the 4 p.m. Che late checkout. Oftentimes programs may say it's late checkout if available. Whenever you hear if available, that is much more of a soft benefit than a hard benefit. And additionally, early check-in is like this as well. What questions do we have on the differences between hard benefits and soft benefits? Or maybe like any type of benefit you're not sure falls into which category? Okay, so why do hotels have elite status? Why are they willing to give you these perks to improve your stay? So they want to reward people that frequently stay with their brand. That's at least the intention originally. Right? It's going to help promote loyalty to one brand. People, right, like you, if you have a choice between two hotels, one that provides you more benefits than the other, you're probably going to choose the one that provides you better benefits. Right? So like the kind of example is, okay, I'll stay at the Marriott instead of the Hyatt because I have Marriott Platinum status and they give me free breakfast. All else being equal, would I choose to stay at the hotel that gives me free breakfast or the hotel that doesn't give me free breakfast? Right? The choice is pretty simple all else being equal, of course. So what are the major hotel elite programs? 
So we have the big players, right? So Marriott Bonvoy, this would load, World of Hyatt, Hilton Honors, and IHG Rewards. These are pretty much the main four hotel elite programs. Uh, these three kind of being bigger deals than IHG right now. IHG is kind of a lesser tier program. Uh, they are going to revamp it this March though. So I'm hoping this becomes more of like a top tier program. That should be very, very awesome. Now, just because these are the four main big players doesn't mean that there aren't a few other very, very, very important ones that, we're going, that are going to come up later. So there's Wyndham Rewards, Caesars Rewards, and MGM Rewards. So these two here being casino loyalty programs. And you might be thinking, well, I don't want to go gamble and spend all my money and lose it all. You don't have to. That's not really the point of these programs. Ironically enough, the programs, especially MGM, has been changed to where it actually hurts gamblers more than people that don't even really stay at their hotels. I have MGM gold status, which has now become significantly harder to earn via staying at MGM hotels. I have stayed at, I think, one, no, two nights at MGM hotels in the past year, and I have gold status. Not through that, but through another means. So you do not have to gamble at all to utilize these programs. And what, what's interesting is that actually these programs end up benefiting these programs, especially World of Hyatt. So these will come up later. So before I actually move on, do we have any other questions? Because pretty much the rest of the class, we're talking about Marriott Bonvoy. So does anyone have any questions whatsoever before we go into Marriott Central? Yes. Do I get any perks when I gamble? So as part of uh, Caesars and MGM Rewards being having status with them, you do get increased multipliers on your gambling spending. That's not why I actually have status with these programs. So the main benefits of Caesars and MGM is that you get waived resort fees whenever you're staying in Vegas. Now, if you don't know anything about Vegas, you won't know how awful resort fees are. So you might see a hotel in the middle of the week, let's say at Caesars, and it's 10 bucks a night, right? And you're like, oh my God, $10 a night. That's basically free. Why not go on a fun trip with my friends? And then you add the $40 a night resort fee, and then you're like, oh, I see why. So not having to pay that $40 a night resort fee and getting a $10 room in Vegas is really awesome. Same thing with MGM. They've now actually increased this benefit to where you can do it on two rooms. So if me and let's say some friends go to Vegas, I can now book us rooms, like if I really wanted to stay at a really bad hotel, for like two rooms for 20 bucks a night each. So very cool perks. Also with Caesars, I have to do some more research on this. They have a thing where you actually get like four nights in the Bahamas for free. And it, like, it's not an actually free, it's like 66 bucks a night. But considering the room is normally like 300, 350 a night, that's pretty good. I'm looking into booking that soon, but I heard they were kind of taking that away. But so yeah, very, very cool perks there. Okay, so Marriott Bonvoy. So if you're not like extremely familiar with Marriott, you might not know like all the hotels that they own. Well, Marriott has 30 brands, quite a lot. And this represents over 7,000 properties. So by far the biggest hotel loyalty chain. And so what are some of their brands? Well, we have some very, very famous and well-known ones. I'm sure you've heard of the Ritz-Carlton. There's the St. Regis, which is arguably a higher tier brand. They own Edition, the Luxury Collection, W Hotels, that one that's like really loud and bold. I've never stayed at a W's hotel, but I wanna try it. And then JW Marriott. And then of course they also own Marriott, Sheraton, uh, La Meridian, Westin, stuff like that. So quite a lot of hotels. If you are traveling anywhere, odds are you will pretty much always be able to find a Marriott owned hotel that is pretty much their strongest selling point, right? Their loyalty program is by far the largest network of any of them. So what are their tiers, right? We, they have these statuses, what are they? This, okay, so this is the Marriott tier chart. So we have ranging from silver to ambassador. These are the amount of nights you need to stay with Marriott to earn these status levels. Very high, you might see on some of these high ends here, right? 100 a night, 100 nights, 75 nights, 50 nights. Those are a lot, right? Now, we're not going to have to stay these to earn these statuses. Like, if you actually had to stay 75 nights, very few people would be titanium. 
What we need to understand about when we say knights to earn, these are what's called elite knight credits. So like ENCs. What an ENC means is it's a hotel recognizing that you have spent one night with them. So when you book a Marriott hotel for one night on your Marriott account, after you stay, you will receive one ENC. An ENC does not mean you get to stay a free night. It means you have been registered to have stayed one night and you are receiving an elite night credit for that. <laughs> I choke. If people are watching the recording, there's a dog walking around. So with these ENCs, there are ways to earn them without actually staying. But if you do stay on your Marriott account, you will earn always one ENC. So if you reach 75 elite night credits, you will now have Marriott Titanium. At the top tier, that's not invite only. There's actually a status level even higher than this, which is just stupid hard to get. But in terms of publicly available statuses, Ambassador Elite is their highest, where you must earn 100 elite night credits and you must spend $20,000 with Marriott Hotels. Quite a lot. Uh, yeah, we're not really gonna be like aiming to get Ambassador Elite, if you couldn't tell. That is a bit beyond our pay grade. So what, okay, now we're gonna cover the main benefits of each tier. And I say the main benefits because there's a lot of useless benefits in any hotel status loyalty program uh, where they really don't matter, right? So if you get a free bottle of water when you check into the room, I don't care. So at silver, it requires 10 elite night credits and you are going to earn some whopping benefits, including 10% bonus points. Wow. Yeah, that's not very good. I mean, that doesn't really matter, to be honest. There's also late checkout if available. That could be good. It's usually like around 2 p.m. if they agree. But to be honest, you can usually just call and request it. And if it's available, they would probably give it to you anyways. So Silver Elite, not really that useful. Uh, it is something to have, of course. But again, like don't go out don't, don't go spend 10 nights just to get Silver Elite, for example. Not really gonna be worth it. The next up, which gets a little bit better, is Gold. So Gold requires 25 Elite Night credits. Again, if you're thinking you're never gonna go spend 25 nights at a Marriott per year, you don't have to. There's other ways to earn this. So 25 bonus point, 25 percent bonus points. Again, not really a huge deal. You get a room upgrade if available, except it doesn't go up to suites. So again, this is a very soft benefit in that it varies heavily by the region and the hotel. So if you're staying in the US or let's say in countries right next to the US, Marriott Gold won't get you that far because everyone has it. A lot of people get it from premium travel cards, so it's not really that special. When everyone is an elite, then no one is an elite. Now, if you're traveling internationally though, let's say especially in Asia, then the room upgrade could be pretty significant because they don't see nearly as many Gold Elite members. Most markets outside of the US have a much, much worse credit card market. So people are not earning this Gold Elite status. In other markets, usually you'll have to actually stay these nights to earn the status, which most people, as you can expect, will not be doing. Yes? I'm gonna figure out their time stuff. Is that how many, okay, or what duration do you need to stay those nights? Is it like in a year or just in a, some other time frame? Great question. So in what duration do you need to earn these elite night credits? It's usually per calendar year. So it's a calendar year cycle, and then it will reset at the end of each year. So you do need to say that many, or yeah, it's per calendar year. So it's not like a lifetime thing. There are ways to actually earn lifetime status, but for this, just to get it for the one year, you need 25 elite night credits. Yes? So does your status reset at the calendar year too? Yes, your status does reset. Now, the, it does depend on the program terms. So certain programs, like you'll get it for the year after you earn it as well. So it does depend on the specific program. But at least the, the night credits do reset at the end of the year. Some programs have what's called elite no rollover nights, where you'll get like some percentage of them back as a boost to your next year requalification. But again, does depend on the program. Oh, you have a question? Yeah. So are all the night credits worth the same regardless of what Marriott hotel you stay in? Great question. So do all the elite night credits, are they all equivalent regardless of which ho hotel you stay in? So yes, except in the case when they're holding a special promotion. So as a standard rule, I will not earn, let's say, more elite night credits for staying at a Ritz-Carlton compared with a uh, four points by Sheraton, right? Even though the Ritz-Carlton is much, much more expensive, I earn the same amount of elite night credits. 
Sometimes they will hold promotions where maybe for certain brands or for certain hotels, you could earn, let's say, double elite night credits. But standard, no, they're all equal. Any other questions? Yes. Does the Marriott Longboy like co-branded car give you any like elite night credits to start your question. We're going to get to that right after we talk about the status. But yes, so does the Marriott Bonvoy credit cards give you elite night credits to start off with? Yes, they do. We will cover that uh, once we go through the status benefits. OK, so those are the benefits of gold. Gold also has the same benefits of silver, as you might imagine. Let's look at platinum. Platinum is where it gets interesting. So it requires 50 Elite Knight credits, double that of gold. You get 50% bonus points, 4 p.m. late checkout. It, it depends on the hotel brand. Certain locations don't have that, but often they might actually honor that pretty well. Room upgrade, if available, including suites. That's important. This is where the good stuff gets becomes, right? You want the suites. You want to get upgraded to those nice suites with a good view, especially if you're international traveling, like you'll get pretty good upgrades. Now, you also get free breakfast or club lounge access. So club lounge access, if you're not familiar, basically at some like resort hotels, they will have like a little lounge to hang out in. Maybe they'll have like a nice view of wherever you're staying and they'll have like free food in there. So they'll have free drinks, maybe free snacks, stuff like that. And so you could go for like evening like cocktails or if you really want to push it to the extreme, you could just eat a bunch of food in there and fill up for dinner and try not to pay for food. So you'll get free breakfast or club lounge access depending on where you are staying. Uh, depending, you could also get both potentially. Now, you also get the benefits of gold and we do have to be careful here about this room upgrade and free breakfast because Certain brands, such as Ritz-Carlton and Edition, are excluded from these benefits. So oftentimes Marriott elites don't like the Ritz-Carlton brand because, you know, even if they're supposed to get a sweet upgrade and free breakfast, especially free breakfast can reduce the cost of your trip a decent amount, Ritz-Carlton does not have to honor that. That's not to say they will never honor it. They absolutely can. No hotel member or no hotel loyalty member is ever going to complain about receiving free breakfast and a sweet upgrade but they're just not obligated to in any sense. Now let's look at Marriott Titanium. So this is really, really high tier. Platinum is considered by most to be the sweet spot of Marriott rewards. You get pretty much the most benefits, breakfast and sweet upgrades without having to stay a ridiculous amount of nights. At Titanium, we start to take it kind of ridiculous. So 75 elite night credits. 75% bonus points, you get all the benefits of platinum, but with also a higher priority. So this kind of goes into the soft treatment you'll get. So imagine you are checking in to a hotel and they see, okay, today we have a titanium member checking in and later today we have a platinum member checking in. Who do you think they're going to give the sweet upgrade to? The titanium member. So you will have a higher priority there. You get complimentary United Silver status. So not too useful, but it is nice to have some airline elite status that you directly get. Uh, and then also the sweet upgrades do work at Ritz-Carlton now if you are titanium. So if you have titanium status with Marriott, the Ritz-Carlton are supposed to give you sweet upgrades if you're staying with them. And let's just take it to the absolutely stupid level at Marriott Ambassador. So 100 nights stayed plus $20,000 in spending. You can't really get around the $20,000 in spending. The Elite Night credits maybe we can help with, but you got to stay at a lot of Marriott's to get this. So pretty much it's the same benefits of Titanium, but with even a higher priority. If you're an ambassador, you better get like all the nice treatment because you're spending a lot of money and a lot of time with Marriott. And if they don't treat you nice, you are going to stay with someone else. You also get a benefit called Your 24, which is kind of cool. You basically get to choose the 24 hour window of your stay. So let's say you check in at a hotel at 8 p.m. That means you can decide whenever you're leaving the hotel, I'm going to check out at 8 p.m. So normally hotels would never let you check out at 8 p.m. That's ridiculous, right? But with this, you could actually, if you show up really late, you get to stay really late. So kind of a cool perk. Any questions about any of the Marriott Elite tiers before we move on? Yes? How often do you get like, upgrades for your rooms? Dep depending on your tier? Just, yeah, for like, any tier. Yeah, so how often do you actually get these upgrades to, on your tier? It heavily depends on the market you're staying in. So if you go to Asia, for example, and you're like Marriott Titanium, 
they're going to treat you very, very, very nicely because there are very few Marriott Titaniums. Even in the US Marriott Titanium, you would probably get an upgrade at least. I would expect if you were Titanium to at least get an upgrade to like the best view of a room. So if you're staying at like a beach resort, I better get an ocean view room if I'm Titanium. Uh, if you're international, it better be a sweet upgrade like every time. But I would not always expect it. It also depends on the season. I would say maybe like a 50-50 chance in the US if you're Platinum or above, depending on the brand, of course, right? So if you're staying at the Ritz-Carlton, le much less than a 50-50 chance. But if you're an ambassador, it's like a 90% chance, I'm sure. Yes? So how exactly do the upgrades work? Like if you book a room at, say you're gold here and you book a room and there is available like some hard room, you just automatically get it or do you like to ask for availability and then you get it? Great question. So do they apply the upgrades automatically or are you supposed to ask for it? So theoretically, right, the hotel is supposed to provide it automatically because that's a benefit of your elite status. You've chosen to be loyal to this hotel chain or you've chosen to earn status with them they are supposed to in turn provide you with that room upgrade. In practice, oftentimes you need to ask for it, depending on your status level, of course, right? If you're an ambassador, they should be proactively upgrading you to very high tier rooms. Uh, if you're just gold, you might have to push for it a bit, maybe say it's a special occasion, stuff like that. And then of course, if you, depending on the region as well, right? But so I would always recommend asking if they did not automatically give it to you. And you can always like reach out to the hotel, like maybe 24 hours in advance and request an upgrade. Any other questions? All right. So how do we earn this status, right? We looked at these, this chart, this ridiculous amount of nights we need to stay. We're not going to do that. I don't, I don't want to do that. I'm not going to stay 75 nights to get titanium. So certain credit cards either provide elite night credits or direct status to help us earn Marriott status. So, these cards offer each 15, night, 15 elite night credits. So we have the Marriott Brilliant, Marriott Business, Marriott Boundless, Marriott Bold. This one's a no annual fee card. I'm actually surprised. I was very surprised to learn today this provides 15 elite night credits. Like, that's actually kind of weird. And the Ritz Carlton card. This card you can no longer apply for, but if you hold this card from Chase for a year, you can request to upgrade to this. So each of these cards provide you with 15 Elite Night credits. Now, if you're like me, when you first heard this, you might be thinking, okay, so easy Marriott Titanium Elite status, right? Like, I got five cards that provide 15 Elite Night credits each. Why don't I get them all, get Titanium, right? That'd be awesome. Don't, never have to stay with Marriott and get free Titanium. Uh, unfortunately, that's not how it works, right? Like you'd wish you could be five cards times 15 each, 75 Elite Night credits. Nope, they don't stack. So it caps out at 15, mostly, mostly. There's a way to earn 30, actually. So here's how we're going to stack our ENCs. So the only way to stack Elite Night credits is to hold at least one Marriott personal US issued card and at least one Marriott business US issued card. So how this would work is let's say you hold either the Marriott Brilliant or the Ritz Carlton card or the Marriott Bold or the Marriott Boundless, right? These are all US issued personal Marriott cards. Any of these would give you 15 Elite Night credits. If you hold multiple, that's fine, but you're only still getting 15 Elite Night credits. But then you could also hold the Marriott US issued business card. This is the only business Marriott card currently that you can apply for. This is from American Express. And if you hold that, you will earn 30 ENCs per year total. So you have now reached 30 ENCs, meaning you've already qualified for gold status and you're only 20 nights away from platinum. Any questions so far? Yes. How, so how about other countries? Great question. So I'm not familiar with a ton of other countries' credit card markets. I do know, for example, like in Canada, they do have Marriott cards that offer Elite Night credits. However, they won't stack with the US ones. So a very, very good YouTuber and travel like blogger, his name is Prince of Travel, he made like an article about this where pretty much the only way to get 30 Elite Night credits stacking 
is by holding the US business and the US personal. If you hold a Canadian personal and a US business or a Canadian, yeah, or yeah, or a, I don't think there's a, I don't know if there's a Canadian business one, but it won't stack. Yes. Great question. So is it just the first year as like part of a bonus or is it every year? It's every year. It recur it's like recurring every single year as a benefit of keeping the card open. Yes. Um, out of all of the Marriott cards, like which one would you recommend? Great question. So out of all the Marriott cards, which one would I recommend? It depends on the bonuses. So for example, like the two high tier Marriott cards, the Ritz Carlton and the Bond Boy Brilliant, probably the Ritz Carlton might be the best of all of them. But I actually applied for this one because back in October, it has a, had a stupid good bonus, like a really, really, really good bonus. So oftentimes it depends on the bonus, right? But in terms of overall, I would say these two are the best, probably leaning to the Ritz-Carlton card, but the annoying thing about that is you have to get this card first, wait a year, then upgrade. So this is probably the more attainable one, except just wait for a really good bonus, and then combine that with a business. What would you say is a really good bonus? It was a really good bonus yeah. for Marriott? So yeah, for this card at least, right? The, when I signed up, the bonus was 125,000 Marriott points plus two free night certificates worth up to 50,000 each. So if you max it out, that bonus was effectively 225,000 Marriott points. Really good bonus for the time, right? Right now it's like 75k Marriott points. So not nearly as good. Now, Marriott is about to devalue their program where their points are actually going to potentially become worth significantly less in about a few weeks. So what a good bonus will be will depend on what I see in a few weeks. But, you know, you want to be getting maybe like a, a good bonus, like 150 plus thousand Marriott points, or at least equivalent, right? So if it's like 125,000 Marriott points plus a 50K free night certificate, that's a pretty good offer still. But you want to be north of that mark, at least in my book, for a really good bonus. Any, oh, yes. How strict is 524 with the Chase co-branded cards? Great question. It seems to be less strict now. In terms of the actual specifics of it, I don't think there's enough data to truly say. I think if you're like if you're at 524 or maybe even if you're 624, it's possible. Anything past that, it might be a bit risky to go for. Uh, in that case, I would probably recommend going for Amex because Amex kind of gives their cards to anyone with a pulse compared to Chase. So if you want like a high tier credit card. Amex is way easier to go for at first. Yeah. Yes. You said the point value is going to be decreased in a couple of weeks. Yes. The Marriott point value will be decreased in a couple of weeks. Oh, yeah. I remember. I helped you apply for Marriott card. You, uh, you know what? Mess with me on Discord. I'll help you spend them. All right. Okay. Yeah. I forgot about that. You, yeah, mess with me. I will, because I'm burning all my Marriott points right. in the next like, week or so. So I will show you some good places. Cool. All right. So, which other car, which cards offer direct Marriott Elite status? I'm going to be speeding up here a bit because I have to go soon. So, which cards provide Silver Elite? That's the Marriott Business and the Marriott Boundless. Technically, the Marriott Bold, the no annual fee card, still provides Silver because it gives you those Elite Night credits and you only need 10 for Silver. But it doesn't actually technically do it in the terms. It's weird. Which cards provide Gold? The Marriott Brilliant the Ritz-Carlton, and of course the Amex Platinum provides everything, and the Amex Platinum business card. So these cards all provide Gold Elite. One note, let's say I have Gold Elite from this card, but none of these other Marriott cards, I can still have zero Elite Knight credits. You can be provided a status without any Elite Knight credits. OK, so uh, yeah, let's look at some of the redemption pricing now, because I've talked a lot about Marriott status and their benefits, I would like to look at some cool places to redeem your Marriott points so you can kind of get a picture of where you're going to want to go. So this is the Marriott award chart for right now. Unfortunately, in about two weeks, they're going to scrap this whole thing and mess up a lot of the programs. So for 3% of hotels, they're scrapping it. The rest, they're keeping it for till the end of the year. Now you think 3% of hotels, that's not too many. Yeah, they're picking all the good ones. So pretty much like when they released the list of which hotels are going to not have this award chart anymore, it was like every one you would ever want to stay at pretty much with your Marriott points. So, uh, and then one other thing to note is if you stay for four nights with a Marriott hotel on points entirely, you get the fifth free. So staying in five night increments can be smart. So current sweet spots, what hotel is this? Does anyone know this hotel? 
Half Moon Bay, yes. Ritz Carlton Half Moon Bay. So this is currently a category seven, meaning a standard night is 60,000 Marriott points, a off peak is 50,000, and a peak is 70,000. The cash rate uh, was, is about $780 a night, or at least when I checked for an off peak night. This is actually the cash price when I stayed last weekend. But I, yeah, I definitely paid points, not that cash rate. So after the Marriott devaluation, this hotel could potentially be going up by 30,000 points per night in cost. So a significant devaluation this hotel, really awesome. If you want to stay here, you better book soon. Another one? This one I have two nights booked at. Does anyone know this one? Yes? It is in Dubai. Does anyone know the name? Almaha. So this is the Almaha Desert Resort in Dubai. This is a Category 8. It goes for $2,400 a night on the dates I booked. It's all-inclusive, so all the meals and activities are included, and it's like really high tier. The so the points cost for a standard night is 85,000 per night, 70,000 off peak, and 100,000 peak. So yeah, and $2,400 per night if you were to pay cash. So very good value on your points, without a doubt. So for this date, and next January, it is, was a peak night. And once the devaluation goes, it's going to be going up, up to 20,000 points extra a night. So wonderful, wonderful, wonderful hotel if you want to stay here. Book soon. A bit more here of a kind of budget option. Okay, I didn't mean to show the name already, but this is the Le Meridian in the Maldives. This is a really good sweet spot. This hotel just opened very recently, and to everyone's surprise, it was a category five. This is the lowest category for a Marriott hotel in the Maldives, and don't let the low category fool you. This is still an absolutely luxurious five-star hotel. No one's going to be complaining about this hotel. The reviews have been wonderful on it. So for a night I checked next like February, for 40,000 points, it was $490 a night. Great hotel. Unfortunately, it's going to be going up by up to 20,000 points per night. So if you have a lot of Marriott points and you want to go to the Maldives, you can stay here quite a long time. Very good hotel. Especially if you're doing fifth night free, right? Even on four peak nights, it's only going to cost you 160,000 Marriott points for five nights. If you have a player two, combine it to get 320,000 Marriott points for 10 nights. Really good redemption, especially if you want to go to the Maldives. The last one, okay, I want to be careful not to jump ahead on the name here because I want people to see if I can guess it. Okay, did anyone, okay, down. Okay, well, did anyone know this before I show the name? This is the Ritz Carlton Maldives at Fari Islands. So this also just opened. And if you thought the other, hotel was nice and expensive. This one is going to kind of blow that all out of proportion. So I don't want to show the cash price yet, but this is a category eight. It is absolutely insane. This is the standard room, but this is the base room. So you can see there is a pool here, if you can't see that clearly, and there's the bed there, and you're literally like on the water. So what is the cash rate and points rate per night? Wow. <laughs> During the dates I checked, $6,300. This is a bit of an outlier. I checked next January. January is like peak time for the Maldives because it's their summer and it's like their dry season. So it's like perfect weather. And as you might guess, this was also a peak night of 100,000 points. But if you redeem for this, you'd be getting 6.3 cents per point on your Marriott points. And if you know anything about Marriott points, that is stupid good. Like the average value of a Marriott point is like 0.86 cents per point. So like well over six times what an average evaluation is. So really good hotel. I could theoretically book five nights here, which after seeing this redemption, I was almost tempted to do. The problem is I think it costs like $900 per person round trip to get here from the Maldives airport. So not even flying into the Maldives, but going from the Maldives airport to this particular hotel. Extremely expensive. And this will be going up by 20,000 points as well in the devaluation, yes. How do you get to your room? Yeah. So like you can kind of, there's like a little path back here and you'd like go into the back. So like, yeah, it's like on the island there. Like it's not like there's a, there's a path back into the main island. Yeah. This is not the one that you booked for next year March? This is not the one I booked next year for March. I booked the Six Senses in Lamu because I could book more nights there. I could book eight nights there. Also at the Six Senses in Lamu, I'm going to get free breakfast and some other perks, which... 
I think you get free breakfast booking points at this hotel, but I'd rather stay longer personally, like the eight nights and then, but yeah, still a little tempted to book this, to be honest. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. So let's say you booked at the off-peak time, let's say two nights, mm -hmm. but if I only have 130,000 points, I'm short on 10,000, so what's gonna happen? Great question. So let's say you book and you're just a little bit short on points. So there's a few things you can do. One, you can buy some points. Usually that's not a good idea, but if you're just short a little bit to make up the redemption, very, very smart. Even better, you could actually transfer Marriott points between accounts, up to 100,000 per year. So let's say you have a player two, they transfer you 100,000. That can help, one, make sure you have enough points for your redemption, and two, could potentially get you up to enough points for a five-night stay, which would be nice because then you only have to pay four nights. So those would be the two strategies there. What other questions do we have? Okay, cool. So action items, there's going to be a, there's a, it's already on the website, the guest speaker question form. Fill that out, please. That is a way, so like all of you can list a question that you wanna ask the guest speaker. You don't have to ask them directly. You can if you'd like, but I would like to just get a very wide variety of questions uh, for the guest speakers to answer.